Hello everyone. This is our unit 4 and in today's video we will cover the sorting algorithms. That how sorting algorithms work in Python. So Python is a language in which we did about that how searching algorithms work. In our previous class we did all about the searching algorithm when we want, when we want to find out a particular element in our list or in our array. But today we will see that how can we sort the whole array in a sequence either in ascending order or in a descending order. So let us talk about what are the sorting algorithms. So the sorting algorithms they are used to arrange your data either in an array or in a list they are used to arrange them in a proper sequential. So now sequence can be either the ascending one or it can be the descending one according to your choice. So, there are four common sorting algorithms that we generally use when we are sorting our data. So, these are the four type of algorithms. So, in today's video, we will try to cover up two algorithms. In the next video, we will try to cover up the rest of the two algos. So, the first one is bubble sort. If we talk about which are all are their algorithms, then there is bubble sort, there is insertion sort, these two topics we will cover today. Then there is selection sort and merge sort, these two topics we will cover in the next video. So first of all, let us see that what do you mean by the bubble sort. So just like as the name says, it is sometimes easy to recognize with the name that double B is coming, bubble sort. So it means it is just taking two elements and just comparing them that which element is smaller and which element is bigger. So when it compares the two elements, then what it will do? It will just compare them and if the elements are not in a sequence in a proper order in which we want, then it will just replace them. The shuffle basically it will do the shuffling between them. So bubble sort this is one of the simplest algorithm. The sorting algorithm basically is again dependent on the comparison based. Comparison based means it is comparing two values, it is comparing two elements. Now in which each pair of adjacent element is compared and the elements are swapped if they are not in the order. Just like I said it will see two elements, it will compare both the elements. If they are not in a proper order, then it will swap them. It will basically replace their locations with each other. So let us see, we are having an array over here. This is an example. So in my array, I am having five elements. One is the five, one, four, two, eight. These are the five elements I have. I want to arrange this whole array in a ascending order. Okay. So now it will let's talk about the first pass that how the first pass will move, how the first iteration will go about. Then in that case, it will see the first two values of the array. So the first two values are 5 and 1. Like over here, it will see the first two values 5 and 1. Now it will see that whether 5 is less than 1. If it is true, then it's good to go there is no that means there is no need to swap anything but if 5 is greater than 1 which is actually it is over here so in that case it will just swap both these values with each other so that means it will just give the location of 5 to 1 and 1 to 5 so this same thing happens over here it will first of all check that whether 5 is less than 1 or as we can say that let's check 5 is greater than 1 is true so here algorithm compares the first two elements and swap now it will do the swapping and now it will become 1 5 4 2 8 so it has swapped these two elements with each other done again now this value will be our this list will be our new input list on which we will work. Now again in this list we will check that 1, 5 is done. Okay. Now we will see the next two elements. So when these 1, 5 is done, so now it will leave 1 over here and it will come to the next element. So now it will take 5 and 4. Now it will check that whether 5 is less than 4. If 5 is less than 4, that means no swapping is required. But over here 5 is greater than 4 as we can know that this number is greater than the 4, no, 4 value. So again we need a swapping in this case. So again we will do the swapping and now it will become 1, 4, 5, 2, 8. Now this list will be passed over here again and again now we will see that 1 and 4 is done. Now let us come to the next elements. So the next element will be 5 and 2. Same comparison will be done here. 5 is not less than 2, 5 is greater than 2. So that means we need to do a swapping one more time. So 2, 
will be over here and 5 will be in the next position then 5 8 again now 1 4 2 5 8 over here now when we compare this 5 and 8 the 5 is less than 8 yes the condition is true when the condition is true then it means that we do not need there is no need to do any kind of the swapping we will just keep the list as it is so it is just like a simple one 1 4 2 5 8 we will just keep the list in a same order so this whole these whole steps these all four iterations which we did they all come under one pass so one time we did basically we traversed the whole list one time we did this part now let's come to the second one so in the previous one as you can see that 1 4 2 5 8 was the final list was the final array which came into our account so now again i am doing a second iteration round so in the second iteration i am passing the same list over here 1 4 2 5 8 the same array is here now again it will check with the starting now again it will check this first two elements it will compare them if the values are greater than just uh, basically if it is greater than with the other one we will do the swapping if it is less than we will not swap so that same concept will go on over here so again i will check that one is less than four yes it is true so no swapping is required so it will be like this one four two five eight as it is so when i'm passing one four two five eight then again now it will check four and two four is less than two no four is not less than two so in this case again i need a swapping so when i swap then it will become one two four five eight when i pass this over here then i will check with four and five there is condition is true 4 is less than 5 no swapping is required fine again this will come over here now 5 and 8 5 is less than 8 condition is true no swapping required so 1 2 4 5 8 i am having a final array but this array is not finalized till the time we do one more swapping when we see see when we do a one more pass if the pass the result of this second pass and the third pass is same then it means that yes now we need to stop our sorting part now the sorting part is equal basically we are having a proper sorted array now there is no need to do any more sorting so when we got the output from the two passes equal then only we are going to stop otherwise we have to continue this process till the time we are not getting a same result so again in the third time we will pass this one this array over here one two four five eight I will pass it over here. I will see with again two two values, again two two elements. I'll pick and see that whether swapping is required, yes or no. Or if it is required, then I'll do that. So one and two, one is less than two, no swapping. Then two and four, two is less than four, no swapping. Four and five, four is less than five, no swapping. And five and eight, five is less than eight, so no swapping. So the output from this one and the output from this one is absolutely same when it comes same then it means that now we need to stop our sorting algorithm this is our sorted array so 1 2 4 5 8 this is a sorted array so see the algorithm needs only one pass without any swap in this one i have not done any of the swapping so i need just one pass in which i am not doing any kind of the swapping then it will tell me that it is a sorted array it will tell me that this one is a sorted array so let us see one thing that how we can just do it in our collab let's try to do it in collab now just like the same previous time we did in the collab so this is my program for the bubble sort in this how i'm just going on that this is my definition of the bubble sorting that how the process will go on so for example i have given here let's start from here that this is my array 51428 i have just given a random array over here and i'm calling bubble sort inside the bubble sort i'm passing array so this array i'm passing inside my this bubble sort function when i'm calling this particular function then it means that we are over here calling the bubble sort array now first thing it is calculating the length of the array what is the length of the array because i need to apply a iteration i need to apply a loop over here so for the loop i need to know that till which number i have to go that till how many times i have to complete it so that i'll cover all the elements so i'm calculating the length and i'm passing the length in n variable 
Now again I am what I am doing that I am applying two iterations over here, two loops I am applying this first one for i in range n. This is required so that it will traverse all the array, all the elements of the array. It will just go how many passes I need. So, these are the, this iteration is for the passes that how many passes I am doing over here. Then again over here I am applying one more iteration, one more loop over I am starting and that I am starting with j. So, j in the range 0 to n minus i minus 1 that is one value less than the n 1. So, by decreasing one value from the i as well. So, what I am doing over that I am starting j with 0. Now, I am searching that if j array at j at j 0 that means the value of the 0th location that is the first element of my array. The first element of my array is what 5. So, I am searching I am basically checking over here that 5 is greater than array of the j plus 1, j was 0, so 0 plus 1 will become 1. That is a value of at a array 0 is greater than a value at array 1, 0 plus 1 becomes 1. So, z at 0 I have 5, at 1 I have this 1, at the first index I am having 1 over here. So, if this condition is true, if the condition becomes true, then it means I need to swap the both elements. So, in the python it is very simple otherwise in C O C++ we try to we basically do it with one more element temporary that we if we want to swap a and b then we store the value of a in temp then the value of b in a and the value of temp in a. But over here it can be done directly that is what it will do that whatever the value I am having at j plus 1 it will be stored in j location whatever the value I have on the j location that value will be stored in the j plus 1. So, like this I can swap both the values. So, I am saying that because 5 is greater than 1 I need a sorted array in ascending order, but over here the condition is saying that 5 is greater than 1. If it is true then in that case I need to replace or I need to swap both the values. So, what I will do I will swap them I will put 1 over here and I will put 5 over here. So, after this particular uh, loop set of loop after this particular set of instruction what will happen now my array will become 1 5 4 2 8. So, that was just one iteration part which I did cover over here. After this again it will go above and it will change the value uh, from 0 to it will become 1. Now, again my loop will start that array at 1 is greater than array at 1 plus 1, 2. So, array value 1 at, at 1 was 1. No, now it was 5 because I have just changed it. So, it will become 1 over here and 5 over here. So, now I am having 5 on this location. So, now at my array 1 the value is 5, my at uh, value at array 2 is 4. So, 5 is less than 4 or we can sorry 5 is greater than 4. Yes, the condition is again true because the condition is again true. So, again I will do the swapping part. Now, I will put 4 on the place of 5 and 5 on the place of 4. So, now like this my array will become 1, 4, 5, 2, 8. So, that is how it will go on. So, when the first iteration gets over, when I when compare these last two values as well, when my first iteration gets over, then in that case it will just move out and it will just increment the value for this i th one, for the i uh, variable. Now, again for the i variable for the second pass again I will start all the same procedure over here. Then I will again compare two values from the starting then we will see that like this way we can go on. So, this was the concept of the bubble sorting. So, let us see one more time that how we can do the next type of sorting and that is your insertion sort. If we talk about the insertion sort, then insertion sort is also quite simple. In the insertion sort, what we do is that we take a particular element, we do the comparison. Let us see it is over here is written that sorting, sorting algorithm that works similar in the way we play the cards. We take a particular card, we will see ok fine this card is over here, I took on a new card, but my previous card was less than so I will just put it on the top. So, the way we just do that, uh, the same concept will come over here in the insertion sort. It will be more clear with the help of an example. Let us see. For example, this is my array 12, 11, 13, 
5, 6. These are the 5 values I have. Okay. Now, I am saying in the first time initially what I will do is I will do the comparison between the starting two values. Quite obviously, I will compare 12 and 11. I need it in an ascending order. So, when I compare them, then I can see that 12 is greater than 11. That means I need to swap them. So, what I did, I just swapped them. I put 11 on the place of 12th and 12 on the place of 11. So, this is how I did the swapping part. Once it is done, now let us move to the next step. Just like your bubble sorting. Similarly, now I will compare these two values over here, the value at the second and third location. So, 12, 13. So, when I say that 12 is less than 13, yes, the condition is true. 12 is less than 13, absolutely true. That means no swapping is required in this case, particular case. Done? Okay. Now, I will come to the next one. So, 11, like I said over here, it was 11, 12, 13, 5, 6. So, similarly, I am having, I'm having over here 11, 12, 13, 5 and 6. 12, 30, at 12 and 13, we already compared. So, no, now come to 13 and 5. So, when I am comparing them, the 13 is less than 5. No, the 13 is not less than 5. In that case, I need a swapping. So, when I did this swapping, then I put 5 over here and 13 over here. Till this part, it was just looking like your bubble sort. But what happens after this step? Now, we will see that as I have done a swapping part, so now I will check that this 5, this 5, is it less than my previous number also? If it is true, then please swap these numbers again. Okay. So, I will check that 12 is less than 5. No, 12 is not less than 5. So, in this case, it means that I need to do a swapping. So, it will swap with the previous element. That the, generally, we call it as a key for, with the number which we are doing the checking part. We call them as a key. So, when I am having a key, then I will check that 12 is less than 5. No, condition is false. So, I need a swapping. When I swap, then I just put 5 over here and 12 over here. Now, again, I will check with my one more previous as I have one more previous element. So, again, I will check with the previous element. So, when I check that 11 is less than 5, condition comes no. It is not less than 5. So, I need to do something about that. That what? I need to swap them. So, again, I swapped and I put 5 and 11 over here. Now, there is no more element which is behind or which is you can say on the starting part of the 5. There is a completely clear list. So, no more uh, checking part is required to be done over here. So, after this what happens? Now, as I have taken, see the same list 5, 11, 12, 13, 6. This is the same list 5, 11, 12, 13, 6. So, now till this point, till 12, I have already verified all my elements. So, till 12, this is a proper sorted array 5, 11, 12. Over here, it is a sorted one. Now, last two elements have been left. I will check 13 and 6. 6 13 is not less than 6 or you can say 13 is greater than 6, then it means I need to swap them. I did the swapping. 6 come over here, 13 goes on the other place. Now, this 6 is my again a key value. It will again check with my previous value. So, it will compare with 12. 12 and 6. Sorry, 12 is greater than 6. In that case, I need to do the swapping. So, it put 6 on the 12th place and 12 on the 6th place. Again, it will check there is one more value which is previous to 6. So, it will compare itself with the 11. It will see that 11 is greater than 6. So, it will do the swapping one more time. So, when it did the swapping, then it becomes 6 and 11. Again, it will compare itself with the 5. But 5 is less than 6. This sequence is correct in that case. So, if the sequence is correct, then it means no need to do any of the swapping. So, if they are not doing any swapping, then we just leave it like this. And now, this part is also sorted. In the fourth pass, I have sorted my whole list. Now, there are no more elements after 13. Till 13, I have checked. Now, from 5, I have started already. So, now this is a complete sorted array. That is 5, 6, 11, 12 and 13. So, this is a complete sorted array over here. Now, let us see if we do it in the collab then how can we go about it? So, let us just do one more thing that uh, we have, we just forgot how to 
see the output. So, let me just show you the output for the previous one. So, see the previous one I have given you an array 51428, the output was 12458 sorted array. Now, let us talk about the insertion sort in which we are just uh, I have just shown you example. So, now in this insertion sort again what I am doing is I am giving a array 12, 11, 13, 5, 6 the same values I have given. I am calling my insertion sort function over here. I am passing array as the value inside and now when I am passing this then this function will get called. This is the definition of my insertion sort function. So, in this what I am doing is that we have to traverse the whole array till the point uh, till the last point. So, I am just calculating the length directly in the previous one I have calculated the length and passed it into n over here I am directly calling the function either you can do like this or you can do like the previous example choice is yours. So, I am iterating a loop I am starting a loop that will start with 1 and that will go till the last element till the length of the array. So, the length of the array is 5. So, it will go till 5. Now, in the key I am passing the first value first of all. So, the key inside the key I am passing array 1. So, I am passing the value over here that is the not the exactly the first value that is the second value because first value is already I am saving with me I am comparing with the second one. So, the second value I am passing inside the key over here. The first value by default is always 0. The second uh, array indexing will be 1. So, now I am starting my loop I'm, and I am also decrementing the j is equal to i minus 1 because as I have to check with the previous value. So, that is why I am de decreasing it over here or I am decrementing it at this point. So, now I am checking till the time j is greater than equal to 0 because by the time when it reaches over there stop there is nothing to compare beyond that. So, till the time j is greater than equal to 0 what we are doing we are just seeing that key if the key value is less than my array j array j is what that is the my value at the array point and the j is what my your location that j location is what I have given in the j i minus 1 in the i I was having 1 so 1 minus 1 would become 0. So, I am checking if my key value is less than my 0 the value at the array 0 then in that case what I will do I will just put my array at 0 into the my next incremented value and I will decrease it my j with 1 and I will make my key uh, that will be 0 plus 1 whatever the value was that after j outcomes then I will increment the key. So, like this way it will again and again check with compare with the previous value. So, it will see whether the two elements compare them. If there is any kind of the swapping required it will read that and it will then compare with the previous values as well. That if it is uh, needed over there as well if required then it will replace them or it will swap them as well. So, like this way it will sort your array then at the last we have printed the array. So, if we see the output see the my array was 12, 11, 13, 5, 6 after sorting it becomes 5, 6, 11, 12 and 13. So, like this way how our bubble sort and insertion sort works. So, what happened in the bubble sort? We take two values, we compare them and again and again we will just see that if it is if swapping is required we do at the same point and then just move ahead. In the insertion sort what we do? We do we take two values, we compare them together, but if the swapping is required we do that then after swapping we will compare that particular value with our previous elements also. If any kind of the swapping required on the previous stage then we do that and then after this we will see that till where we can go. So, these were our two sorting algorithms in the next PPT again uh, in the next class we will do one more uh, one more example basically that how our sorting works. So, there are two more types which are left with the uh, sorting part and those parts will cover in our next video that was your selection sort and the merge sort. So, thank you, we will see you in the next video.